Hey everyone, my name is Gunther and welcome back to the channel where today we're checking out a different type of game, Frostbound 2. Uh, closed beta has finally started and I have it for a few days and I figured I would uh, dive in, maybe show you guys what this game looks like. I'm a huge fan of Frostbunk and 11-Bit Studios. And uh, for those who don't know, Frostpunk is a uh, pretty unforgiving game, depending on the settings you go with. And Frostpunk 2, I'm really excited for because it's definitely changing up a lot of the Frostpunk style of gameplay. And I'm really curious to kind of uh, dive in. And in our closed beta, we really only have access to the Utopia Builder preview. So we don't have a whole lot to play with, but we are going to be working with Windswept Peaks and Waki Communities that we're working with. So these are new, are going to be Machinists and Foragers. But if you go through, uh, unfortunately, they're not available uh, in the uh, in this preview, but we have Workers and Merchants, Lords and Thinkers, and Random. So I'm really excited to kind of dive in. We're going to stick with the medium difficulty and uh, going to start off from there. Now, we can only play through up to 300 weeks and time can go by uh, surprisingly fast. And I'm going to keep on boarding on because I think there is some pretty cool tutorial messages that we need to take away from this game. Uh, but without further ado, let's dive in. A new beginning. The end of the world changes people. It changed us. Us, the foragers, natural survivalists, adapted to the harsh frostland conditions, and the machinists, descendants of groups that built the initial cities and maintained their machinery. We choose you as our steward to lead the city as overpopulation looms and resources dwindle. We all dream of a better future, what it is should look like, and this we can't agree on. Tension stirs and radicals rear their heads, navigating this will be your ultimate challenge. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, for those who don't know, Forge as a Machinist actually kind of fits the entire uh, theme of Frostpunk because uh, we had our engineers and we had our regular uh, people. Um, so we are in our windswept peaks and it's time for us to colonize. And there's quite a bit that has changed with Frostpunk 2. So to kind of give everybody a quick uh, overview, we uh, we have a few things that have changed. Uh, the UI is significantly more streamlined. It looks really clean. But on the top, we have our heat stamps, which are kind of like our currency that we're gonna be working with. We have our cores uh, for those who are Frostpunk uh, veterans. We already know what this looks like. We have our workforce, There's significantly more people that we're working with, but those budgets are actually much higher as well now. We have heat. We have shelter, food, of course, materials, and goods, which is something definitely new to the game. So goods are how we can improve our uh, heat stamps because the heat stamps are uh, weekly currency. Right now we're trending about 11 per week, which is okay. We have our coal and then we have our guard squads. And we start off with our basic city and there's a few things that we have to look. But when we zoom out, this just looks gorgeous. Our little city right here in the in the midst of uh, some mountains. It's uh, very gorgeous. Uh, if it wasn't so cold, I think it would be a very, uh, very beautiful place to live. But you can see the game has changed. And we're used to building individual items and working out and planning. And we don't have to do that anymore. First thing we're going to do is we're going to break into some new areas. And this is the new idea. So ice has frozen over. We can't really access a whole lot. We need to mark it, make our way over to this coal. So how we're going to do that, we're just going to select a few options. I think we can select up to eight and we need to kind of work our way in. So we're going to get our, uh, our, our frost breakers or ice breakers to uh, head on out there. But on top of that, we also need to start working on a few other things. So we're going to unpause the game and we're going to start working. So first things first, we need to build a uh, housing district. Kind of going off the uh, beaten path with the tutorial here. Uh, but this is how we built. We have these little uh, housing districts that we have to kind of satisfy. We have to create six. We can see that in the wheel there. And uh, how you choose to do it is up to you. So we're going to go like this. Kind of wrap around a little bit. We'll also create a second housing district only because I know it's going to ask us to do this. And we've set it up. So kind of interesting. It's not like our original Frostpunk build. It's a little bit of a different style, uh, but we still have our, our heat core, our central district, our generator, which is uh, utilizing our coal and burning it uh, 70 for 70. So if you look right here, we can see our uh, output and input are uh, pretty flat right now for a lot of our materials. The same for food. We're not really uh, making anything. Um, so we do need to uh, we do need to start work. We can see we have large stockpiles that we're working with, which is kind of nice. We're not used to working with so many large stockpiles in the game and uh, we are uh, making our way through. Now, we can set up our extraction district. So our extraction district will pull forth uh, some uh, materials, coal uh, and whatnot, and we need to set it up on top of our little area. So with that, it uh, automatically creates our, uh, our little pathing system. It's nice that we don't have to really worry about that too much anymore. Uh, again, Frostpunk, a vastly different game from what we're seeing in Frostpunk 2. 
but I don't really think that's a bad thing. This is gonna open up to even more people. It's still gonna be that city management uh, with a little bit of survivalist associated with it. Uh, and some really cool, I want to say almost like Crusader King 4X style, uh, different decisions that are going to come up later in this uh, this episode. Now, the reality is, is I think I'm only probably going to do maybe one or two of these episodes. It is only in the beta phase. There's not much to showcase, but we can definitely have some fun and try to explore as much as possible. And really, it's going to be up to you guys. So if you guys want to see more of Frostpunk on the channel, which is something I don't normally play, uh, let me know. Because uh, I'm a huge fan. I'm probably going to end up playing this game uh, amongst a few other games uh, that are coming out uh, later this month as well. Uh, so we uh, we can kind of uh, enjoy them together. Now, when we click on our housing district, we can see a few things. We can see demolish, we can see power, and then, of course, we can see expand. And everything that we do right now is going to take our heat stamps. We have to be careful, but we are going to expand this one district uh, only because I know that we're going to have to. It's going to tell us that we need to do so. Uh, but we are in the midst of uh, creating our uh, little extraction district, and we're going to speed up time just a little bit to kind of get that fresh and flowing. We do need some coal moving in and just like that, scraping the barrel. So with heat from the generator and shelter for everyone, we're safe from the cold for now. But as the city grows, it will not be enough. The machinists and the foragers have different opinions on how to improve the city further, and we need a place to develop ideas for the future. Expand a housing district to provide more space for advanced buildings and build a research institute. So we've already done that. We're in the process of expanding that. We can also see that we're starting to pull in. So if we hover over our coal, we can see that we're extracting 120. So we're using a little bit more than maybe we, uh, we should be. So let's expand this a little bit more. And then while we're doing that, we're gonna use our frost breakers to start making our way up here. It's important that we kind of get up here as fast as possible. And the reason why, we have some delicious iron ore. That's something new in uh, Frostpunk. We also have fertile ground. Now, what we're not used to is when we hover over some of these resource nodes. Uh, so iron ore is an example. We only have access to 3.3 million, which seems like a lot. And it probably is. I haven't actually gotten that far in my experience playing with this game. Uh, but we do need to kind of keep an eye on it. So uh, we're dealing with more resources, but there's no there's no infinite resources anymore, as far as I can tell. Now, we need to look at expanding and creating our little research institute. So this is where we have those individual buildings. And they're not so much individual buildings as they are buildings that are uh, tacked on to our districts. So remember, districts are going to be our primary building style. And then we'll add in these little interesting uh, buildings on top of that. They do take up your workforce and your heat stamps. We can we look at our research institute. It's going to take 200 of our workforce and 100 heat lamp stamps. But if we look at our population, we can see that we're actually steadily growing. We're actually in a growth phase. Now, something I did skip over, and let's circle back and take a look at it. We have our uh, cold, so we have all of our uh, our uh, different uh, menus here. So we have cold, hunger, uh, squalor, uh, or housing, I guess would be the best way. Frozen, um, not frozen force, the disease, there we go, and crime. So the more crime, uh, we want to reduce crime. The best way to reduce it is to uh, improve our uh, goods. And more goods will also mean more heat stamps. Again, heat stamps are going to be the primary resource in this game. Uh, so knowing that, let's place down our research institute. We're gonna start working on that. And uh, I think we just need to wait and uh, see what happens. There's some really cool features as well that I kind of like in this game. So if we kind of continue our expansion, I'm gonna build this area out. This is something I really like. And uh, it's what I've always enjoyed about Frostpunk. We can see our, uh, our frost breakers. Our little uh, machines are driving around with some uh, saw blades on the end and uh, breaking up all that frost and that uh, ice or that, that really tough snow and then they disappear uh, which is sad so i would hope that maybe one day we'll see them kind of uh, working their way around now we do have our little pop-ups again so different ideas and communities so small crowd gathers outside the new research institute arguing how to exploit the last coal veins the machinists want us to learn on lean on machine powered mining and the foragers would have us pursue a more frugal solution. They would never display such discord in the captain's heyday. You have to choose who to trust with developing their idea. So this is really going to be where we need to stay in power. And how we stay in power is we kind of appease both sides uh, of our communities. Um, so let's take a look at our options and decide what we're going to do here. So we need new ideas to move forward. However, different communities may propose diverging answers to the same issue. They will only pursue solutions that align with their worldview. Choosing a community to develop an idea that will improve your relations with that community. So we always want to have a good relationships with our community. That's how we stay in power. Let's be honest. Frostpunk is all about having all the power. So we do need to expand our coal mines. And we have two options. 
we have a dust coal mine. This requires an extraction district with a coal deposit. We already have that. And mining operations will, uh, where residue coal dust is sucked up and compressed into briquettes to make maximum use of the resources. So we can see that it's going to take us a little bit of materials, but it is going to increase our disease or our chance of disease. Alternatively, we have grinding coal mines. So operation using grinding machines to churn through coal seams quickly, leaving heaps of slag behind. And this one's going to increase our squalor. We're seeing a bunch of a disease or a bunch of uh, just, a, just a terrible mess kind of hanging around. Other than that, there's not much too, too much of a difference. There's more workforce associated with this, but I would rather have disease because I feel like that's something that we can manage with like hospitals, things like that. So we're going to go ahead and develop our idea and it is going to take some of our heat stamps. So we're going to go ahead with that. And just like that, we've started our first research. It's going to take 14 weeks to kind of get there. Uh, so we do need to uh, work on that. Now on top of that, security for the future stockpiling. Steward, we are extracting more coal than we currently need to provide adequate heat to the city. As such, we've begun to stockpile the surplus. At the moment, we have ample storage space left. However, this space will eventually be filled and any additional coal will be left out in the elements, rendering it worthless. If we do not wish to lose the surplus, we should build more depots. This is something new. We're in a position where we, uh, we actually need more stockpiles, but we're sitting on so much coal. So we don't want to lose access to our coal. It's a, it's a terrible thing to happen to us. So let's go ahead and take a look at our uh, depots. So weirdly enough, I think it's, uh, I don't really know where it kind of sits under. I don't know. And maybe it's just like on its own, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to select, uh, let's see here, a fuel depot. And if we look at here, we can place it anywhere. We're going to go ahead and place it right here. But on top of that, we uh, we are in the process, I think, of expanding. There we go. <laughs> also, if we unpause the game. Now, we don't want to continue to using the uh, the frost breaker. And the reason why is because the more we use it, the the more tickets, the more uh, heat stamps to kind of take up. But we do need to pick up something. Really, I am eyeing this uh, frozen uh, forest. Oh, look at that. We have fertile ground as well. So let's take advantage of this uh, this wood. So we're going to go ahead and start working our way around. So again, we just need to uh, place it up. We have our district forming. Again, our paths automatically kind of go through, which is fantastic. That's exactly what we want to see. And uh, then it's kind of like a waiting game. But the one thing I love about Frostpunk is just how absolutely beautiful this game looks like. I really wish we could kind of get a little bit closer in there. It's on the slowest difficulty. People are running around pretty fast. And I love the, just the details, the lights that you see. It's almost like a, a picturesque uh, image. And it just looks really cool, an overexposed uh, photo, if you will. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And the other thing, if we look, we can see these like little uh, heat pumps, these mini generators uh, building up around our little uh, our housing uh, districts. And we can continue to expand it. We can actually see here our total demand for heat and our total output, which is the amount of shelter that it's providing. Uh, so right now we have a surplus or shelter, which is ideal and it's perfect. So again, we're just in that waiting phase, but nothing wrong with us continuing to expand. And we can actually start to see that we're finally pulling in some materials. Now, the benefit of pulling in the materials, because remember, we're a little short on goods right now. So it's time for us to start working on some goods. And what we need for that is an industrial district. So we have a few options of where we want to place our industrial district. Now, if I was a betting man, I would say we wouldn't necessarily want it too close uh, to uh, maybe our residential sections, which are over here. Uh, and we may, if we were to have some type of uh, uh, building uh, process associated with it, we might probably want it close to our industrial district. So knowing that, we're going to place it just like this. Now, the other thing we have to keep in mind is we also want to expand eventually. So. Uh, we need to keep some space ready. We don't want to build ourselves into a corner. We want to maximize our space as much as possible. And then now that we're waiting, we're just waiting for this research to finish. Four weeks left, not too bad. And we can see right here, we are tolerated. So this is our city trust level. For those who are used to Frostpunk, we've seen this before. We definitely know what it looks like. Right now, our uh, foragers are neutral. Our ma uh, machinists are neutral. 51% of them are uh, foragers of the city. 49% consider themselves machinists. So not too, uh, not too bad there. And if we look right here, we can see our goods. We've come up. We've, uh, we're still missing a little six, but we can see that our heat stamps income has increased to 15, which is fantastic. It's exactly what we wanted to see. Now, knowing that, we, uh, we are almost on the cusp of getting this coal mine ready to go. And just like that, we do. So now we see under extraction, we have a new item here. So we can see that we can place down our dust coal mine. It's going to take up some of our materials, but we finally have a surplus, if I'm not mistaken, available. Yeah, requirements 50, demand 150, output 200. We're perfect. 
So we're gonna go ahead like that. So it's gonna place down some more. And just like that, we've uh, improved our coal intake. So we have our over coal intake. We can see that we're uh, spending 10 for every one. Uh, well, it last 61 weeks. So we definitely need to uh, to improve this a little bit and that coal district will uh, will definitely help out. With the new mine, we have enough coal output to last us a while, yet differences between communities remain. Even under the previous leader, plans have existed to establish a council to settle such differences. More pressing problems always delayed them. The time has come, steward. The people want to stay in how the city is run. We need a council. So this is kind of cool. I'm really excited about this. So when it comes to building our castle, what we have to do is under central. We're a little short on heat stamps. We actually need 80. So we're going to give it a few weeks to kind of uh, stockpile that up. But this is going to be how we work with our uh, our our council, our city, uh, our city members. So we're going to go ahead and place that down. Finally, we have enough uh, stockpiled heat stamps. Uh, we're going to have to rein in our spending, though. We're a little uh, we're a little on the cusp. But the council gathers for the first time. We can go on new laws. So the first council session, people cheer as the gate of the council opens. It feels like a piece of the world lost to the frost has been changed. People are hopeful to have their voices heard. While the machinists and forgers clash about our survival strategy, neither has a firm stance on economic or social issues. However, many in the ranks do, though they do keep uh, to the shadows for now. So let's go ahead and open our first session. And I'm really excited about this. This looks so cool. Uh, there's been a few games that I've kind of seen something like this uh, implemented, and I'm, uh, I'm super excited about what we can kind of uh, go through with this. So the council, the people of the city have sent 100 delegates to represent them. Your role as steward is to propose laws that will be put to a vote. However, communities have different outlooks on many things. You may have to negotiate or pressure them to get enough support. So we have a few options. We have survival, economy, and society. So let's take a look at survival first. We have food additives and goods that we can kind of unlock. We go on our economy. We have basic necessities, uh, contagion prevention, community service, outsiders, tons of options. And in society, we have uh, funerals and childhood. But let's focus on survival for now. And let's focus on getting our food situation reined in a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and click on food additives. And it's going to give us two options. So there are no established standards. We know that there's no current rules associated with it. And we have two different options. So we have uh, chemical additives. The city will prove chemical ad additives with tested and tolerable risk levels. Disease is marginally increased and food production efficiency is significantly increased. Alternatively, uh, only natural forage ingredients may be added to food. We will train people to forage for these in the frost land. So food output per capita is slightly increased. For me, I actually feel like forage additives, something better. I wouldn't necessarily want any chemical additives in my food, especially if it's 1918, we're living in the in the frosted uh, wasteland. So let's go ahead and we're gonna propose this law. Now we're given an option. So we can vote or negotiate and we can also pressure delegates. Now be warned, if you're gonna pressure delegates, it's gonna actually uh, maybe uh, shift the council's view of you into the negative. And the really cool thing is we can click on some members of our council to kind of get their profile. So for foragers, as the frost covered the earth, these people and their ancestors were caught by beyond the safety of the generator cities forced to adapt to the harsh conditions of the frostland, they learn to survive against all odds. At times, foragers decide to settle in the cities once again. However, the ordeal of surviving the frost has developed a lasting mark. They believe adaptation is key and growing reliant on technological gimmicks invite, uh, invites disaster. Machines tend to break down as soon as the conditions deteriorate, human spirit is a lot more enduring. And then for our machinists, these people are descended to the groups that built the initial cities and maintain their machinery. They faced the great frost, uh, huddled around the generator and believe this technology marvel is why they are alive at all today. This belief shapes them. When there is a problem, they would seek a way to solve it through automa automation by devising machines to do the work or exploit available resources to ensure good safety margins. To them, technological progress is the only way to ensure survival and maybe even prosperity. So we kind of have an idea of what our two people are looking for, what our two different uh, communities are looking for. And we can see people are pretty divided right now. We have uh, four or 38 against our 25, and then hesitant are sitting at 37. A lot of them are actually going to be machinists, and we require a majority, which is 51. So I think we're pretty okay for this right now. We're going to go ahead and click on vote. And we're going to see what happens. So we can see 38, four. Uh, we can see a few more people start voting soon, 45. The Look at that, just squeezed by with a uh, majority 55. So the law has passed. Now, the law has been agreed on and good. There are challenges ahead. Improving coal extraction is a success. 
but the vein will only last so long. We need to explore the frost land for a permanent source of fuel. And that's the first step in our colonization effort. If we don't take it, the city will have no future at all. And this concludes the onboarding tasks in the previous. So there's not much more of a tutorial past this. You're on your own. The game throws you to the wolves, uh, for a lack of better term. And the city must not fall. We have one goal in life. So we're going to kind of stop it right there for a few seconds. We can see our uh, our relationships were uh, kind of neutral, kind of neutral, even though we kind of gave them a little lift. Uh, we cannot use up scarce resources too quickly, so we have to be careful about what resources we have available to us. So if we click on uh, this particular one, we can see we have 72 weeks of wood left. And if we click on our coal deposit, we have 397 weeks. So we're, we're doing pretty well. We have a lot of surplus, which is fantastic. This is exactly what we want to see. We want to make sure that we're holding on to it. Now, the one thing that's going to hold us back in the game, it's always going to be our heat stamps. It's kind of cool. Heat stamps are a derivative of, uh, of the original currency in the game. So heat stamps are the currency used in the city. Originally, literal stamps redeemable for a fixed quantity of heat. And they now function as a universal means of exchange. So we know what we have to focus on. Now, we have another pop up here. So Sue Miller, 12, street urchin, looking for trouble. Cindy's pa went and got her a governess, like she's gonna be a duchess or something. Not on our watch. We roughed up that little, I'm not gonna say that word on <laughs> All right. Ferguson boys will learn this too. If and they try and wife us again tonight, we'll pull razors and say we'll cut out their eyes. That's very dark. Uh, it'll be good fun. But what's, uh, what we want is a proper rumble. Short blades only call on who wants to play. So the lack of law regulating childhood is causing tension to rise throughout the city. I love these little stories. Uh, it's pretty intense, pretty dark, but I guess it is a dark time to live in. But what this tells us is maybe we need to focus on a law for how we address children. Maybe we need to get them off the streets and into education so that they can start to learn and they can be the uh, the future of our city. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and close that down for now because we, uh, we uh, need to wait at least a week before our council can meet again. But in the meantime, let's take a look at research. And there's quite a lot of research uh, to go through and you can kind of see we don't have everything but you can see branches uh going off so you can definitely see that the research tree is significantly bigger uh than it was uh before there's a lot more options but not just that we have survival we have economy and we have society so as an example if we look under society we see hospitals we can go with foragers so an institution that provides medical treatment to sick and injured people to speed up their recovery or we can go with a hospital uh, with the um, machinists, the institution that provides medical treatment to sick and injured uh, to be able to speed up their recovery. So pretty much the same. What's the difference between the two? Not, maybe not much or anything. I feel like uh, I feel like everybody's going to be happy about this. So we'll hold off on that. Maybe we don't need that. Maybe what we do need is uh, some food. We need to we need to start getting our food in order. We need to start stockpiling that. So let's take a look at hot houses. So we have foragers, uh, we have a chemical drum hothouse, industrial sized hothouse where chemical nutrients are injected into tubs of crops to accelerate their growth. Sounds terrible. Uh, industrial sized hothouse where organic waste ferments in large vats, fertilizing re uh, revolving shelf of crops. I actually don't know what to go with. We can see disease, disease is going to be slightly increased if we go with our foragers. But if we go here, we can see squalor is going to go up and take less workforce. The same, more food though with our foragers. So there's there's a, a trade-off. Less food, more heat, squalor. I'd rather go with the disease, I feel like. So let's go ahead and develop this idea. We have a stockpile of some heat stamps. We can kind of start working on that. Now on top of that, we need to start waking our way. I want to check out these old way stations. I feel like this is how we start to explore the rest of the map. So let's go ahead and start making our way over there. Now, every time we do use our ice breakers, our frost break uh, breakers, if you will, it does take a little bit more out of us. So it does take some more heat stamps. We have to be uh, very cautious of how we utilize our heat stamps. And we actually start seeing that our food is starting to climb. We're not really seeing a whole lot of growth. Uh, our stockpile is now empty. We, uh, we're not doing so good. So we do need to get our food under underway so hopefully uh with our hot house we're gonna be good there but on top of that we have another pop-up what's this one rexdale 45 entrepreneur returning from the city approach trail a profitable day first couple were all rags and bones and useless but then there was this woman with real ruby earrings ought to cover the arrival fee i said the wife will love those next was a bunch of strong fellas send them straight to elaine's place she'll ring them dry before i get home uh, la lately, there's been less of them. Maybe we're just getting around. Gotta take advantage while it lasts. The lack of law regulating outsiders is decreasing population growth. 
which is definitely not what we want to see. Because not only do we have to worry about heat stamps, we also have to worry about our total workforce, and we can see that our workforce is starting to dwindle overall. And we're seeing a slight decrease uh, in our uh, population. So I think we have a choice to make. We can either have a law on, uh, where is it? Somewhere here, uh, citizenship outsiders. Uh, so right now, our population growth is slightly decreased, so we need to figure this out. So let's go ahead and click on outsiders. We have two options. We have allow productive outsiders. We'll only let in outsiders who will contribute to the city's economy and turn away the unproductive, or we can accept all outsiders. We will welcome all who wish to join our city and share in its benefits regardless of their ability to contribute. So there's two different options here. We can see that we're going to get more heat stamps, but our, our, our population growth isn't going to be increased that much. We need population growth. So we're going to go ahead we're going to accept all outsiders. Now, this is going to be a little bit harder. We have 70 people who are kind of hesitant, and we need more. We need at least 51. So let's go ahead and click on the negotiate option. And this is where it kind of gets cool. So accept all outsiders. We'll welcome it. So this is our law that we're trying to, plan, or trying to uh, pass right now. Uh, we can open to negotiate for foragers or machinists. Uh, so we want to uh, open negotiation with our foragers. So we take a look here, accept all. So we want a vote. They will support the law during the next voting. And then we have to kind of give them a term. We can see their terms. Uh, let's forge choose the next law to be voted on by the council. We can uh, expedition support. Everyone must aid expeditions by helping them prepare for their journey. So exploration time is decreased. It's actually not a bad one, actually. Uh, and then worker shifts. So we can see quite a few. So they do want us to enact a different law, some, some laws here. Uh, research some things so we kind of choose let's go ahead with getting the uh, community there we're going to grab them the agenda and this is going to give us exactly what we want so we're going to go ahead and accept that and we're going to vote it's going to be an easy pass now the downside is maybe we tipped our hands did we actually need all those people do we need that negotiation tactics but our law has passed we'll take it it's a win we needed to kind of uh, work with the, the people that we have, and we can kind of see uh, maybe our our our, our uh, relationships are starting to improve. Now, with that, I think we're going to end it there. It's been about half an hour since I started this video. I'm trying to keep these videos a little bit shorter, so I guess we are going to definitely see some more episodes. I'm digging uh, Frostbound 2. I think this is a fantastic game. I'm really excited about that. Let me know if you're excited more for this. Uh, and as always, I just want to say thank you very much for your support. Uh, I'm having fun playing games. I hope you are too. If this helps you to maybe decide on picking up Frostpunk 2 or not, uh, that's okay. Let me know because uh, I'm really excited for it. You're going to see more of this on the, on the uh, channel when the game finally comes out. Looking a little ways off. But just remember, everything we're seeing right now is a work in progress. We're going to definitely see different things out there. Um, so don't be alarmed if you find that maybe the game isn't to what you're looking at right now. Uh, it could definitely see quite a bit of different developments uh, down the road. But otherwise, again, just want to say thank you to everybody. And of course, ciao for now, everybody.